Michael, let's just look at the game tonight. Was it a matter of hanging on there in the second half a bit? Ah, it was, you know, as the man says, we had the goal advantage and we wanted to see what they were going to bring in. We were trying to play on the counter a wee bit, but our possession, you know, wasn't good enough. And, you know, they're really good with harp side and have a good attitude about them. And uh, I said before, the last time we were here, that they, they don't lie down as harp sides. They've, they've come a long way. You know, as an ex harps man, I'm getting at one side of my mouth, I'm speaking for Bonnie yeah. and the other side, I'm impressed by them. And they kept going to the end. And we showed a wee bit of resolve that we wouldn't have showed this time last year which is good from our point of view, and it was just about getting over the line at yeah. the end of it. They are competitive, aren't they? Did yeah. you say they really kept going? Yeah, no, they're a really, really good side. Uh, like They've come on a long way, because traditionally, you know, you'd have played them, Derry and Harps, them young sides, and Harps have kicked on a wee bit, where it gets to 65 minutes before, you would have started just picking up more yeah. possession, yeah. more possession. But these Harps sides are actually really clever now, they're starting to keep more possession, they're moving you wide, and their shape's really good, and you know, they've done a really good job. Yeah, Potential for senior players among them, Michael, would you say? Oh yeah, there's, there's three or four there, now, uh, I would say our champion at the bat, you know, and as the man says, that's the job to knock on Ollie's door to see if they can get in it. And if they keep going the way they're going, to give themselves a chance. Yeah. Just look at the picture in the league there. Did you miss a trick at the weekend there, down at Fanet, dropping a couple of points with the other two big ones thrown in at Lakeview? I absolutely. We were actually, you know, we were discussed coming out of the game to concede after kind of the way the game panned out, going one up, you know, two one down, and then back to three two up, and then just concede against a corner. And what was it, the ninety first second man? We were di- probably disappointed. And then when you come in and you hear, you know, the, the big two mm-hmm. have dropped mm-hmm. points, and you know you're trying to stay on their heels. I was disappointed, but it was kind of like a flat weekend at the same time. Yeah, Nobody yeah. went anywhere. Yeah, it's competitive, isn't it? The top because Harps are on the mix there. I know everybody hasn't played the same number of games but there's a couple of points separating the top four there Oh absolutely like as I said traditionally uh, you know it would be the big two but Harps and ourselves are knocking at the door and as I said yeah, I couldn't speak highly enough of that young Harps they really have come a long way in their attitude and their t- in terms of the way they want to play a man's game because this is what it is you know it's yeah, intermediate yeah, football yeah. there's a big difference between the 19s and, and, and they're stepping up to it and if they give themselves a little bit more confidence and belief you know and I think that's what it comes down yeah. to because they're definitely got everything else right and, and there's better four teams pushing at the top of the league and maybe Fanet might improve and join that as well than just one team walking away with it. Well, that's it. Arthur's actually done a good job at Fanat. He, he, you know, he had to do a rebuild. They lost a lot of people. You know, uh, blacks, two blacks went to Milford and stuff like this here, or mm-hmm. to Kilmac. So, you know what I mean? He had to do a, re, a, a rebuild job, and, and you know, he's, he's doing a good job down there. And that's what it's all about. You know, somebody has to try to close the gap and cock kill because they've set the standard, and it's up to you know our, ourselves to try to catch it. And you know, Rovers and uh, Harps and Derry. You know, it's yeah. up to us to try to fill the gap. Talk about men doing a good job. Ollie Horgan's done a pretty good job at Van Harp since he came in. I mean, you were there for a long time. Michael saw a lot of comings and goings. Are you, are you concerned with the number of goings that we've seen now, post-season, particularly after staying in the Premier Division? Yeah, like, obviously, uh, you know, it's been well documented. A lot of senior players have went and they'll be, you know, they're big losses. They're club icons, you know, they were, some of them were there for 10 years and, you know, moved on and did other things. And that's it. I know myself, once you close the door behind you, that's a new chapter for somebody else. Yeah. And like Ollie Horgan will be on the hunt, he'll be wherever he has to be in England and he'll see all those uh, games during the season that the PFAI leave on for players. So Ollie will be at that. You know, I suppose with Ollie getting a two-year contract, me looking at it, maybe Harps have you know got their thinking caps on. It needs to be a rebuild job. It needs to be maybe bring in more uh, the under 19s potential because you know we've lost a couple of them to, to Derry City, yeah. and you know that that's not ideal. That's not what you want. It's a very hard ticket them to sell. Yeah. So you know I suppose Ollie, like it's a juggling act. He's going to have to do the budget, and he, you know you know yourself, it's not cheap to bring a, a senior player to you know the Northwest. It's yeah. not. Yeah. So Ollie, Ollie knows the job he got into. There's nobody better at it. And as I said, I, I never would bag against Ollie Horgan. That's for sure. And with Paul Higgerty with him. Them two men, there won't be a player in the county that's available that they won't be speaking to right now. Yeah. He seemed to be pretty adamant at the press conference earlier this week that certain things had to happen off the pitch for him to consider signing the two year contract. Now, he seemed happy that those things are either in place or going to be put in place. That's a key element, really, because he's enough to be worrying about, hasn't he? Well, that's it. Like, I don't think 
people, uh, well, football people probably understand the job Ollie does. Ollie sorts the kit to the training pitches to yeah. doing the match day shape, and you know he does everything. You know, and it's a one man show up. Well, him and Paul, mm. you know, it's a two man band up there, and yeah. there's nothing that they don't do. You know, obviously the financial officer was something he wanted to get in to get out around the country and try to bring in as much revenue as possible. And that's what it's about. It's about revenue. It's about businesses. Uh, you know, buying into it. I see they've redone their sponsorship with KN, so that's yeah. massive, massive. You know, and that's, that's another uh, Donegal sponsor, a sponsor in a good Donegal club. So hopefully, you know, people can kind of you know see the job that Ollie's done uh, on a, on a limited budget, and you know. He, need, he needs financial backing, and that's it. He needs people to buy into it and believe in all the organ, and that's what he needs to try to sell. Yeah. A couple of your big mates going in opposite directions. Gareth Harkin re-signing for the season. Great to see that. Keith Cowan moving on to a new challenge for him, someone that you played and I know that you're, you're very close to. Big decision for him to make as well, Michael. Massive decision for a massive decision. You know, uh, he spoke to me about it, and then you know when he came back and he said that uh, he made the decision. And, and as a, a, I played up the north as myself, and I said it's a great league and it's a great opportunity, and he's, he's playing for one of the top four clubs yeah. in the north. It was like a 34 for me. I think it was a great decision. It was an opportunity that was never going to come again. And he'd done a service for Harps. There's nobody could speak, you know, a bad word about him. He put his heart in his sleeve. And I wish him well. It's an exciting time for him, as I said. You know, uh, there's nothing like putting on a fan Harps jersey. And that's something I will say when I moved away. You know, it's, you know, football, you love football, but there's nothing like pulling on the Harps jersey. But as a man says, it's a new chapter for him and a new challenge. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting up to Belfast to see him. Mikey Place has gone back to Galway. That's no big surprise. Nathan Boyle, I think, has gone off to Australia. Harry uh, Ashcroft has gone back. There's a doubt about Jason Burgett. It goes on and on. So Ollie has a lot of stuff to do between now and February. Yeah, but that's the only thing. I was, Ollie would have known all this before he took the job. Like yeah. This won't be a surprise, a surprise to Ollie. Um, so like all these things, it's going to be a full rebuild. It's going to be a, a massive challenge. People, I don't think even people realise the massive challenges as they get to players to the North West. But as I said, there's a lot of talent in that 19. He does need to fill it with senior players and have the 19s fill the gap and keep the momentum and the energy coming in and out and picking up their experiences that way. But from what I've seen and I've heard, all those other 19s are happy to go down the country, pick up their experience and wait for their chance. Yeah. And that's a massive attitude change to what I would have seen in a, you know, on that, that bit as well. For all because we've got to be realistic. You can't throw six or seven young fellas in to the Premier Division. If you're playing the First Division, it's a different story, Michael. You've played in both for Harps, and I mean, Harps have struggled to stay in the Premier Division and done brilliantly, but you can't throw in too many kids. No, you can't. You have, it has to be a balancing act. You know, you have, you have to have your core. I think if you're a real good core of senior pros, you can fill in the rest as you go with real talent that you're coming. And as I said, with them young fellas, you get that honesty and energy, but what you do get mm. is the silly mistakes along the way. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get away with it, sometimes yeah. you can't. But that's that's the balance and act all I'll have to do. And final question, maybe slightly unfair, Michael. Is it a case really next year, no matter who Ollie brings in, that Harps looking to survive in the Premier Division to call it a good season? Or can they push on now as he hopes to do? Well, the only thing I will look at is Derry last year, and I know their budget is far out greater than Harps even this season, but they did it last year. And that would be yeah. the challenge. I think everybody would throw out Dolly, you know, especially me, a fan. I wonder can he can keep that, uh, you know, Derry got that enthusiasm and got a wee bit of momentum at the start and it took them a long way. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not talking about European football, but I'm just saying, you know, football's a funny old game. It's amazing if you could get your tails up early, where it would take you.